411 Live. Well, you can learn about issues that affect us every day. Stay the world. 411 Live. Real people, real talk. Made to help people in our community in every way. For your girl. Here's an interesting statistic. In Milwaukee, more than 67% of the teachers are white, and more than 90% of the students are children of color. Recent research suggests that kids perform better academically and behaviorally when they are exposed to teachers who look like them during their school experience. But there's a problem. There's not enough black teachers or teachers of color. Hello everyone, I'm Beverly Taylor, and this is the 411 Live, real people, real talk. We're gonna talk about all of these issues because there are solutions that we wanna talk about them and maybe a solution that you haven't really thought about. I have three special guests with me today. I have from, uh, Mil- they are all Milwaukee educators, Anthony McHenry, CEO of Milwaukee Academy of Science, Rodney Link, Jr., CEO at Milwaukee Excellence, and Jennifer Lopez, CEO of Carmen Schools of Science and Technology. I'm smiling because I think I have the elite of the, the, of the elite. So, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Thank Thanks for having, having us. Thank you. Um, we, I say at, in the intro that a solution that people may not think of, and that is the importance of teachers of a color or having diversity within the teaching uh, pool that is so important, maybe people don't really think about. But before I get to that, which is the meat of what we're talking about, but I want to talk a little bit about your schools and what makes them unique. So Jennifer, I'm going to start with you. Sure. Um, Thank you, Beverly, for having us. Uh, And I'm excited to be among two incredible leaders. Um, So Carmen Schools of Science and Technology, we are a pre-K through 12 uh, school system, six schools, uh, five campuses, um, close to 2,300 students, and about uh, 300 staff members. Mm -hmm. We are focused on STEM education and um, ensuring that our students are prepared for success in college and careers. And um, we provide internship opportunities for our students as early as 10th grade um, in various different organizations in our city. And I'm proud of not only having over 90% of students who graduate from high school and go on to college, that we have a persistence rate of about 84% pre-pandemic and about 76% um, currently. Uh, so that is higher than what I've seen in our city, um, where I often see where 9% of students are graduating from college um, upon graduating from high school. Very good. How about you, Rodney? Rodney Link Jr., proud CEO of Milwaukee Excellence. Um, 6 through 12, about 600 students currently now. And we are the new kid to the block, Um, but we're learning from these great leaders, uh, Jennifer and and Mac. Um, They have been great um, colleagues and friends in teaching us. So we are 6 through 12. We focus on youth leadership development and enhancing the creative ability of all at our schools. Um, You might have seen us back in the day for certain viral videos and and, and rapping videos um, from my predecessor um, and the founder of the school. Um, currently, we are having our first graduating class this year. Which nice. really Congratulations. About. And shout out to our college uh, advising team. They already have about $1.8 million in scholarships for our first graduating class, which we are really, really excited excited for. Um, moving forward, um, we have had accolades in the past pre-pandemic. We were a school that was a five-star school three consecutive years in a row. Um, post-pandemic, we are... Not a five-star school at this moment, but we are fighting to get back to that place. And that's coming back to the basics. We do focus a lot on double reading and double math at our organization and ensuring that we're looking at the data consistently. Um, I always like to say we're the number one developer. Uh, I try to be that. I learn from other people. You know, <laughs> That's at the table here, too. So they develop people well as well. But I, I, we have to do that here in the city because we look at our staff members, uh, about 60 percent plus are people of color in our organization at this time, uh, and they're directly impacting with students. All right. All right. Last but not least. Well, first, I just want to thank you for uh, allowing us to be here and to talk about this very important conversation. Uh, Milwaukee Academy of Science is a K-4 through 12th grade school. 
Uh, we're in our 22nd year of existence. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are now at eight consecutive years of record enrollment, now serving over 1,400 scholars. And um, our demographics are 97, 99% African American. 97% of our babies are living in uh, what uh, we call economically disadvantaged households. Uh, but despite those uh, challenges and the fact that they're coming from 25 different zip codes, we are now at eight consecutive years of 100% graduation wow. uh, of our seniors. Uh, the stat I like even more than that, our four-year graduation rate, which means the ninth graders who come in, uh, 94% of those young people graduate uh, within four years. So we're really excited about the work That's that we're excellent. doing and the trying to help our young people overcome the challenges that comes with growing up young, black, in Milwaukee. Wow, that's great. That's great. Um, I w- want to point out, since we're going to be talking about teachers of color, I want to point out that Rodney and Anthony are black, and Jennifer is Latina, uh, and I'm black. Um, <laughs> so before, um, I want to kind of talk about the the impact because I think about when I was in school and I think of some of the teachers of color that I came came in contact with and the first thing that pops in my head was I think I was in the fifth or sixth grade and my parents were getting a divorce and I was I was really going through it and there was this black teacher who she was a science teacher and she pulled me out of class and she sat me down and she told me I know what you're going through and she kind of walked me through, you know, this is this is how you're going to feel. I understand it. But we got to be focused. You know, you can't let this slip. You know, she just talked me through that. And I can think of a few teachers who did that. So I know from my experience that it made a difference, you know, because I was seeing somebody who looked like me. Mm-hmm. So I throw that to you as to what you see the impact is. Yeah, well, like you, I had my own personal experience. Uh, I was just sharing with somebody recently that uh, the meanest teacher I ever had in my life (laughs) was Miss Stevenson, my fourth grade teacher. Um, But if you ask me then, and if you ask me now, who's my favorite teacher, it was Miss Stevenson. And when I reflect on that, I think the reason why both are true is because she was an African-American woman that was willing to push me beyond where I was comfortable going at that point. Right? Mm-hmm. She was the first person to tell me that I am smart. She was the first person to tell me that I can be whatever I chose to be. And I think that's one of the benefits for uh, our kids, um, whether they're black or brown, to see someone who looks like them, mm-hmm. not only because it allows them to dream big because they see a professional in front of them, but also the experience of having someone who is willing to push you beyond your comfort mm-hmm. zone yeah. because they've been likely in some of the same situations, some of the same cultural uh, norms that you have and some of the same challenges that, that those children are facing, they've already faced those and they know that they can overcome them. Right, right. Jennifer, you are in a different situation because I remember talking to you and you had not uh, had a, a teacher that looked like you mm-hmm. until college. That's right. Wow. Yeah, I went through my entire pre-K through 12 education without a Latina teacher, Latino, Latina teacher. And uh, to me, um, it was incredibly powerful experience. Um, I was taking a diplomacy of world affairs course, and it was a higher level course. And I, I asked to be and requested to be a part of that course because I had, not only were they Latino, but they were um, Salvadorian, which is my background. And um, you know, I was able to to be in that course, and it really was transformational. I had someone that looked like me, someone that had similar experience to my own upbringing. Um, someone that he really was able to get me to understand the beauty of my culture mm-hmm. and my language and my identity, um, something that I had not, t- I had taken for granted. Um, and so that is something that I want to be true for all of my students at Carmen. I want my students to be able to see themselves reflected by the individuals around them, whether that be teachers, whether that be the staff, whether that be principals. I wished for one day for a Carmen alum to take over my role as a CEO, because I yeah. know that then, then we have we have done it. We have made it possible for our kids. You know, that's it's it's something that, you know, similar to what I heard Anthony shared, like he had incredibly high expectations for me. Um, he pushed me in a lot of different ways because he understood that I could do better. And because of him, I, I think that I, I learned the power of having representation. Excellent. I don't want to leave you out. 
<sighs> I'll find my way in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's too Rodney. <laughs> I I think the the story that resonates from just both experience. I had the the honor and privilege of having a black principal when I was in my mm. elementary school. Um, I went to Frederick Douglass Elementary School on 38th in Concordia. Really sad that it's no longer open. And I had a dream that I was going to open that school back up. Like when I came back, I was, it was the whole thing. But Mr. Thompson, Principal Thompson, um, made it so I was able to see myself as someone that can do this role. Mm-hmm. And I believe as Jennifer states, when we sit in these positions and get results for students and fight tirelessly for them, they're going to say, oh, I can do that as well. And I think that is something that is is, is prof- the profound impact. I think we need great teachers of every race inside all schools. Mm-hmm. The profound impact that a teacher of color does for our students, they can see themselves doing that now. And I think that's the part that um, is missing sometimes and and missing the sense of like we are the bearers of knowledge we can teach our own communities i think the last thing i'll leave you with on this one is when we used to they said before integration right we used to control the church the stores and the books right education so before 1954 brown v board we lost some of this cultural capital of seeing ourselves as the bearer of knowledge as the person that's saying hey you are going to give me this knowledge and I can give knowledge to one one another as well. And that's where I think we have to get back and we're fighting very hard to to do that. Um, Mac and MAS, they just put on, I'll, I'll pub them, they put on the, a great, you know, diversity conversation around bringing people back into teaching because I believe, and I think you are doing a great job here too, because people don't know what's at stake mm-hmm. right now for the city of Milwaukee if we don't get more individuals that look like us mm-hmm. teaching our students. Right, right. And then, you know, you you look at, and, you know, we've all seen the stats and all this, the, the education gap between black and white students, uh, brown students, white students, all of those comparisons, and the gap is wide. And this is one of those ways that we could start narrowing that gap, um, I think. Absolutely. Okay. So we know we need them. We know we need teachers of color. Where do we get teachers of color? Because, you know, a lot of graduates are going into other fields. They're not going into education. And to me, with education, it's more of a calling than a profession almost. Mm -hmm. Uh, But how do you get get that drive? Yeah, I I, want to challenge with the the question just a little bit. Okay. Um, It's not a small part of the equation of how to fix it. It's a big one. Having high quality teachers, as Rodney said, of any race Mm -hmm. is the answer. Right. Right. I I said this the first day that Mm -hmm. uh, I spoke to uh, the staff at Milwaukee Academy of Science when I was hired. We can become a great school if I'm an average CEO, but we got great teachers and -hmm. great student support staff and paraprofessionals. The opposite is not true, right? Uh, It's the key. If we get high quality teachers, kids win, right? What research is telling us is that if those teachers look like the students, the rate in which they're going to win accelerates tremendously, right? Just the fact that having one elementary kid, one teacher by the time you're in third grade Mm -hmm. that's of your race increases your likelihood of graduation 13%. Like, that's mind-boggling. Just one, right? What if they have 10? Yeah. Right? What if all of them are are African-American teachers? So it's a big part of the challenge. I think one of the things that we are doing wrong, but us, the three things that, one of the things that we have in common is we're no longer just looking at traditional pipelines for teaching. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is kind of rethink how we talk about the education profession. Like it drives me crazy when people say, oh, teachers aren't paid enough. Well, to be honest with you, that is 100% factual, right? But there are several other occupations, and quite frankly, most of the other occupations that black people are graduating college from that are also underpaid, Mm. right? And simply, we can't pay our teachers worth, right? I'd give all of them a million dollars because that's the work they're doing. But the point is that this is a career that you can 
you can have a really, really quality life if you become a teacher and if you choose to do something behind that in education as well. So I think we just need to change the messaging mm -hmm. so that kids aren't constantly hearing that teaching is such a difficult job and it's a low-paying job. People can create a great life for themselves mm -hmm. in the education space. Uh, but the other part of it is we just can't depend on colleges to push out all of the, the teachers. And so I say to anybody who has a degree or is pursuing a degree, whether it's in education or not, you should really consider this, right? You're not going to find a job that's going to be as fulfilling as helping young people chase their dreams and their goals, right? And so I just want to change the kind of the narrative about teaching mm -hmm. first. And secondly, we have to look outside of the traditional teaching pipelines to find next year's educators. Right, right. Thank you for saying that because, you know, what I think of educators, teachers, I think that profession goes way up high. You know how we first responders, we're, you know, we put them on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. I think teachers need to go up there too mm -hmm. because Absolutely. teachers are educating our future. Mm -hmm. You know, these kids are going to grow up and they're going to be our aldermen or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's our future. So the quality of these students means the quality of our city, the quality of our state. It's just so, so important. All right, I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> We're going to take a short break, come right back, and talk to these wonderful educators. When we come back, stay with us. I'm an ex-drug dealer, and I'll be your sub today. Two milligrams of fentanyl can be lethal. A lethal dose is in here. Who gets it, I won't know. It's cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. The sad reality is fentanyl is being mixed into everything now. More kitchen now. Worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out? You can say how are you or get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's all good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome back to the 411 Live. Real people, real talk. We're talking to three CEOs, uh, Anthony McHenry, Jennifer Lopez, Rodney Link Jr. You guys all have really spectacular schools and you're doing a great job. We were talking about solutions, getting into the solutions, because you were saying that at this point you have to look at different ways of getting the quality teachers, the quality teachers of, uh, of color into your schools. So what are you guys doing? What are you reverting to? I'll start with you. Yeah. If you look at the stats on people of color and teachers of color, it's usually alternative programs. So I, I was not at first a, a, t a teacher. I didn't go to school in education. I actually majored in finance, investment, and banking. Um, and then joined an alternative program, Teach for America. Um, and there's a couple other people um, in here that have done different post backs to give back to the community and, and work. And so I think what we are trying to do is build, well, at least at Milwaukee Excellence, build avenues and pathways for our, our teachers right now, our paras, people that don't have credits at all, um, and really try to pour into people that have the will, but not necessarily the skill, but they are definitely deeply connected to and committed to making sure kids do well. I think the part that we do have to still address, and I think we were hit on it a little bit, but I want to just illuminate it and highlight mm -hmm. it even more. Education for some of uh, the people in Milwaukee, if you look over the years from 90s to, to now, it wasn't a great experience for them going through their own educational journey. So sometimes I feel like there's this sense of, I don't want to do that to another student. Right, because I don't feel like if I'm, if, if, am I qualified to do that? Right, because you, I, you try to get anybody to try to, you talk to them like, oh no, I can't do that, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. And again, this goes back to what I was saying earlier, them seeing themselves as a bearer of knowledge. But if they weren't given the knowledge beforehand from someone else that didn't look like them or, like, limited their belief, as Jennifer says, she saw someone like her and he saw her, and said, I'm going to push you to this level. 
then that's that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna hinder us even more. And so I believe that we have to get out of this people like to use the word imposter syndrome and things like that, but being a learner, because I think that's some of the things where you see people like, oh, I don't know how to go there. And then what if I don't pass the practice test, which is a real thing. And I can go into the the, the stats on that later, but it will, it will be longer than the next 15 minutes <laughs> around how that test is also like keeping people out, um, the four things of those natures. Um, these are all certification tests to be an educator. Um, we have to, we have to, our we're all doing it build pathways to, to, to make them do it. So we, we have a program currently now with Concordia, which other people have tapped in. There's some at Mount Mary, there's some at Alverno, and we're trying to cluster them up. And if you know, uh, at least I see, people of color like to do things collectively. Mm -hmm. And if you have a group of people you do it to get together with, you're more likely to finish. Right. <laughs> right. And I think that's what we're trying to do now at Milwaukee Excellence is cluster those individuals, find a, a, a pathway for them, and then let's make sure they have it. We have three people right now in a Concordia program online by yourself but it's advanced and you still have to make sure you pass and then there's someone real time checking in with them myself because we're going to try to give them money for right. a stipend for that as well okay jennifer what about you yeah so we're doing a couple different things at carmen one i think it's important to really think about the environment that we're creating in which we can actually hire uh teachers of color and also retain teachers of color mm -hmm. Um, so what we see also in research is that teachers of colors resign at higher levels if the if the environment is not an environment where they can see themselves being developed and supported and where they can thrive. So, you know, we made some very intentional goals at Carmen in terms of diversifying not just our teaching staff, but also our leadership staff. So one, I'm Latina, and then my senior executive team was also 50% Latino, or, uh, excuse me, not Latino, people of color, excuse mm -hmm. me. And then our principals, also, we made a shift in terms of also our leadership there. So of my six principals, currently four are people of color. Okay. I have two schools in the north side of Milwaukee, and I have four schools in the south side of Milwaukee. In my north side schools, I have two incredible black leaders leading my middle school and high school. And then my south side schools, I have a Latina and a Latino uh, at, in a principal at a high school and an elementary school. Okay. So... What we've also done is also taken a look at our hiring practices, because if we, you know, attempt to hire uh, individuals without necessarily looking at what are the biases that we have currently in our selection processes and making some changes there, um, that way we can actually attract people of color and select people of color and bring them into our organization. Um, I like to say like a, like a Spanish word like ganas, like where there's ganas for something, you can make it possible. So mm -hmm. you can find people as long as you are creating the environment spaces yeah. and prioritizing that. You know, I, I heard someone say recently in, in terms of diversity um, that when we were all trying to like battle COVID, mm -hmm. we all came together as an entire world to figure out a vaccine, right? Yeah. And what Anthony said earlier about like, it is transformative if we have people of color, teachers of color in our schools, especially in Milwaukee or across the country. We know these stats. These stats are no different than they were 30 years ago, 40 years ago. It's a time where we need to come to collectively as an entire country to really put all time and effort and energy and resources be not behind making this a priority as well in our schools. It's it's we've had too many years of like having an academic achievement gap for people of color, for students of color in this country. Um, but to, you know, and additionally, what we've done is, you know, we, I said this earlier, but I want Carmen alums to come back to Carmen. So we've added additional resources, uh, financial resources to bring our Carmen alum. And I'm really proud to share that we have 15 Carmen alums currently working in various different departments uh, within Carmen. Uh, and That's that great. is, that's that great. is special when mm -hmm. uh, Carmen students can see uh, a former student that walked through the same hallways, were in the same seats, um, just mentoring and supporting them, telling them, you can do it, si puedes, you know, um, that's pretty um, incredible. Um, so, you know, we, we hope to be able to do a, a grow your own program where we can, you know, create some partnerships with some college and universities because we have to change things there too. <laughs> and we have to make some changes at the state level as well, certification the practice we're, we're making this just too one expensive for people of color who 
come from low income backgrounds mm -hmm. to get certified in teaching uh, when we we know that that doesn't necessarily make you a more effective teacher. <laughs> right, right. So, um, you know, there's a couple of different things that we're doing, and we're trying to do it as a multifaceted approach. Okay. Anthony, what are you, what are you guys doing? Yeah. Uh, first, I just want to say uh, what Rodney and Jennifer said is spot on, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, uh, it's so important and trying to create uh, new pathways for people to get into the education space, including developing your own, is, is, is the things that we have to do. I'd also say to uh, other school leaders, because I know these two are probably already on top of it, is that uh, I, I hope I've done a lot of good things at, in my time at Milwaukee Academy of Science, but one of the things I know I didn't do well was I didn't commit the resources to going to find next year's and our future year's um, uh, teachers. And so I corrected that mistake last year, and mm -hmm. I hired Jennifer Berry, who's sitting over there, uh, who's our talent acquisitionist and teacher development person. Two parts, right? One, uh, part of her job is to support the teachers that are currently there, mm -hmm. particularly the minority teachers, to make sure that it is a, a culture That's huge, that, yeah. that, that, is, that is not only supportive of them, but allows for them to, be, to have a voice and be heard. Uh, but the other part is to be focusing on who is our next group of teacher. And if you think about who are the individuals in our community that are the least likely to become teachers, they are kids who are growing up in poverty, mm. they are black, and they are males. And one of the things that uh, Ms. Barry's doing is she has created a program specifically for young black males to be a part of our program, first as paraprofessionals, and getting tremendous support and develop them, developing them as educators, but also creating a pathway for them to then go get their education uh, to get to the, the degree so that they come, can become teachers. And so it's just an example of really thinking outside of the box, uh, but that can only really happen when you have somebody who's dedicated to uh, committing their time and energy and resources to trying to find next year's and uh, the teachers of tomorrow. That is huge because, you know, we say we need t quality teachers of color, but we really need quality male teachers of color. Absolutely. So that that is, that's tremendous. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, it's a big climb, but you guys have the vision and you know where you're going. So that gives me great hope, you know. Um, I appreciate everything that you're doing. I really, really do. And the other thing is uh, it can have a trickle-down effect. If you are seeing people who look like you, who are teachers, who are quality teachers, you admire, uh, you look up to, the chances are greater that you might, you know, decide to go into education. Absolutely. And that will help, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I'm really impressed with all three of you, and I thank you so much for coming. Is there anything the public should do? Any advice or anything? Encourage. Encourage. I, I encouragement. I believe um, the theory of motivation by Alberto Bandura's work in, of psychology and social psychology, it, if you tell someone that they can be a, something, they're more likely to do that, right? So in different communities, they tell people for different sports, you can be this. And someone really believes that, and they put all their efforts into it. Um, I think we need to tell people to help and teach more at a young age, right? We can't have, there's a study where some teachers or you look at generations of educators and like there was an educator that, that got the next student through and that they didn't become an educator and then their their grandkids are, are not educators so it's like we have this thing in our community that you shouldn't be an educator so i think you have to encourage that that's the only way that we will um, get out of this situation um, of, of not having the respect for I think the industry and respect for it in the community, the community has to say, no, we respect it, like we respect the church, right? Like we respect the doctor's office, right? If someone's, uh, and this is may on my, on my soul bus, but even to like to the parents and everybody else, like, hey, we at our, if you, you can't be late to work, so you can't be late to school. There you go. Don't there be mad, don't be mad okay. at us, man. You know, so you, like you have to encourage, you have to be bought in and co-sign. That is, okay. So that is the word for everybody listening. Encourage. Very good. So again, thank you, Anthony McHenry, CEO of Milwaukee Academy of Science, Rodney Blink Jr., CEO of Milwaukee Excellence, Jennifer Lopez, CEO of Carmen Schools of Science and Technology. Whew. 
Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank and you thank really. you for joining us for another edition of the 411 Live. We are a nonprofit organization, so if you would like to help us out, go to our website, the411live.org. I'm Beverly Taylor. And again, this is the 411 Live. Real people, real talk. If you would like to check out past episodes, there are many ways. Go to your favorite podcast platform. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Like and watch us on Facebook. Watch and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have suggestions for future episodes, go to our website, the411live.org.